Hello, this is Justin at the Tech Train again here, and welcome to the fifth of the tutorial series looking at how to begin programming with Small Basic. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Turtle. Now, the Turtle is a package which is included with Small Basic that allows us to create drawings and graphics. And in order to create drawings and patterns and images, uh, we need a graphics window. Now the graphics window is different from the text window that we've been using, uh, whereas the text window displays text, the graphics window displays graphics. Yes, that was probably fairly obvious, but uh, let's have a look at what it looks like. We can bring up the graphics window in the same way as we use uh, this uh, little preview uh, pop-up of uh, commands that we can use here. Uh, that we use for the text window. So we can type graphics window dot, uh, and then we have a range of options. Now I'm actually using um, three monitors at the moment. So the graphics window will actually appear on the wrong monitor uh, for my videos. So I'm gonna start off by saying graphics window dot left equals about two and a half thousand and graphics window dot top equals 250. Um, that way, when I do graphics window dot show, uh, then you'll be able to see it in this video here. If you're using a single monitor, which you probably are, um, then your graphics window will simply appear in the middle of that monitor. So if I run this program now, there you are. You can see a terribly exciting graphics window. Uh, it's not particularly exciting at the moment, so I think it's time to bring the turtle out of his little shell. No, that sounds cruel. No, we won't take the turtle out of the shell. We'll bring the shell with us as well, and, and we'll just make the turtle do some drawing for us. Now, in the same way that we've used the object method and value in the past, uh, where we take an object, a physical part of the program, if you like, and we then tell it what we want it to do, the, the method, the action, and then we give it a value. We do the same thing with our turtle. So the turtle, think of it as an object, as a, as a thing, as a noun. Um, and now that noun needs an action or a verb, and that's our method. So object, method. Now you can see again, as I put the little full stop after the object, we get a list of all these different actions, all these different uh, things that we can make our turtle do. And the one we're going to use is move. So turtle.move. Note again how the colors of the text change. So we can see that the objects here are all in this dark teal color. Um, and the actions, the, ob the, the uh, methods here are in this uh, dark brown color. Uh, so these as well, by the way, uh, these are um, not actions, as you can see, uh, these these aren't actions, left isn't an action. Um, if anything, it's a, an adjective or something, describes where something is, preposition perhaps in that case. Uh, so those are what we call properties. So the property of the graphics window, um, still very similar to an action, a property or an action, uh, but properties have this equals after them and actions have the parentheses or brackets because we need to tell our turtle how far to move. How many little baby turtle steps do we want it to move? Now it is quite a small turtle, so we're going to keep the, uh, the number of steps quite high. Otherwise, we're not going to really see anything happening. Um, but that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Um, you don't have to type these first couple of uh, instructions here. That simply positions my graphics window so that you can see it in this video. Play around with this if you want to and have a look at what it will do. Um, but uh, don't worry about these two lines. And in fact, you don't really need this one uh, because if you ask the turtle to move, that will automatically bring up the graphics window. But it's probably important to know that you're controlling the graphics window and that there are various things that you can do with it. Let's run this program first of all, so we can see this turtle move. So I'm gonna click the run button at the top there. And there we are, there's our little baby turtle. And you can see that he has taken 100 steps. The turtle always starts in the middle and he always faces up. 
so he, or forwards as far as he's concerned, we're looking down on the turtle, but he has moved 100 steps in a forwards direction, which is fantastic. But we want him to turn, and so we need to have another command that we can use, another statement which will get the turtle to turn. Now, if you imagine that this is uh, a compass uh, or a protractor, you have zero uh, at the top, so moving forwards is zero degrees. If we want the turtle to turn right, then that will be 90 degrees coming out to the right here. If we want the turtle to turn around and face the way he's come, then that will be 180 degrees. And of course, if we want the turtle to be facing left, and we're going to stick with always turning right, then that will be 90, 180, 270. And 360, of course, would bring him back where he started. Uh, a much dizzier turtle for doing it. So let's turn the turtle now 90 degrees to the right. So again, object, we always get the attention of the thing that we want to control. Then we tell it what we want it to do, turn, and then we have to explain how to do that. Uh, in this case, 90 degrees. We don't need the degrees symbol in the same way that we didn't need to write in the word steps here because that's the only thing that can go in brackets. If we move, it's always in steps. If we turn, it's always in degrees. So if we run this program again now, you can see there's the turtle and then he turns. And we can then move him again. So we can type turtle dot move <clears throat> and then a hundred steps. And now we can produce a right angle. There we are. So there's a right angle, and what I suggest you do at this point is you pause the video, well, not, not yet, pause it in a second, but I've told you why to pause it. Pause the video in a second, uh, have a go at typing this code out yourself, and what I want you to try and do is to draw a full square. This here is half a square, and you're gonna try and complete the full square without looking at my code, uh, without cheating, and if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. It just means that you're a programmer. So have a go at doing that, and then come back to this video when you've done that, and we'll move on. I'll show you how I would do it. Okay, pause the video now. And then unpause it, well, presumably you already have, or you didn't bother pausing it the first time round because you are a rebel. Uh, so let's have a look at how we could do this. Um, first of all, um, copy and paste is always your friend. So I'm going to take these two lines here, like that, and then I'm simply going to paste them once, twice, three times. So now I have four pairs of lines which are telling the turtle to move forwards and then turn, then move forwards and turn, move forwards and turn, and then move forwards and turn once more so he's facing the way he was at the beginning. There we are, we have a square. So what you can try doing now as another little experiment is see can you now get the turtle to move forwards up this line here, then turn left, so remember that's gonna be uh, 270 degrees. So 90 to the right, 180 down, then 270 to the left. Uh, there are reasons why um, we're sticking with degrees and just turning right each time, uh, simply because it's gonna make things a little bit easier later on when we do some other things. Um, so move up forwards first of all, then turn left and draw a square that basically mirrors this one on the right. So the turtle has a square on his right hand side now. You're going to try and produce a square which will appear on the left hand side just here. So again, pause the video, switch over to your Visual Basic, have a go at doing that. And when you finish doing it, come back and have a look at how we can do it. OK, so pause the video now. And again, you're either a complete rebel and just not having a go at this at all. Um, or you've paused it and had a go. And I hope if you did pause it and you had a go, you were successful. But don't worry if you weren't, um, because programming is all about making mistakes. Uh, if you never make a mistake with programming, you're really not trying hard enough. 
Uh, so let's have a look at how we can do this. Um, and by the way, for anyone who's saying loops, 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 yes, I will be looking at loops, but I should be looking at that in the next video. So that's in, in tutorial six. So we'll see how we can improve this um, by using loops. So if you know a little bit about programming and enough to think about loops, then don't worry, I will be coming on to that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't panic. We'll look at that in the next video. So how do we turn left? Well, first of all, we're going to have to uh, bring up the turtle and turn, uh, sorry, move forwards 100. So we're going to move forwards, uh, as I suggested, first of all. Then what we can do is turtle.turn. Um, and this time the turn is going to be 270 degrees. So the turtle is going to turn effectively to the left um, hand side. So if we run that, there's the turtle moving to the right going around this way and back to where he started then he's going to turn towards the front move forwards then turn all the way around and now he's ready to move forwards in this direction here so he's now got to move forwards <coughs> excuse me move forwards turn left um move forwards turn left move forwards turn left between so three of them so effectively, again, it's these instructions here, one, two, three times. So if we run this, oh, by the way, before I run it, um, let's just speed things up a little bit because at the moment, um, this turtle is not the fastest creature in the world. Um, we can speed up the turtle and we can do that by doing turtle.speed. Now this is not an action, speed isn't an action it's a, a description an adjective if you like um, and so for this reason we don't put brackets we put an equals remember brackets are for the actions equals are for when we are describing how something would look or behave what we call a property so turtle speed now this is a number between one and ten one is incredibly slow and ten is incredibly quick so I'm going to put I'm going to put eight, I think, so that you can still see what's going on, but it's just a little bit faster. So let's run this now. And there we are forwards and round for that square and then back around. And you can see now he has produced that square and that ends up facing the right way again. So there we go, uh, producing simple squares using the turtle. And you see here, we've actually got a, a program now that's 22 lines long. You might notice that I've put some gaps in here. Now that doesn't matter at all. Uh, you can have as many spaces, as many blank lines as you like in a program. Um, the computer will make no, have no problem with that whatsoever. In fact, programmers do tend to put spaces in between blocks of code a little bit in the same way that when you're writing a book, uh, you put spaces between your paragraphs. Um, so writers space their paragraphs out to separate different ideas, different uh, I concepts or different conversations. Um, and that helps to make it a bit easier to read. And that's the same for programs where well, you tend to break up your programs a little bit into sections. So all of this at the top is just getting my graphics window set up. This paragraph here is getting my turtle set up. This paragraph is drawing the square on the right. And then this paragraph is drawing the square on the left. So breaking your code up like that makes it a lot easier to understand what's going on and to see where a block of code is if you need to make a change to it. Um, something else that we can do as well, which I'm going to do at the top here, so I'm going to just break a little bit, is actually change the colour of the line that the turtle is using. Now we can do that uh, by using the graphics window uh, object um, and then going into the pen colour property. So being a property, being a description, we're going to be using an equals sign here. And then we're going to write a name of a color. So because it's a name of something and it's not a variable, we need to put it in speech marks. Now I'm going to write uh, deep pink here. And there is a, a list of colors that you can use in small basic. If you just go into Google and search for small basic colors, uh, you'll see plenty of websites there. The first one will be the, uh, the best one to use probably. It's on Microsoft.com. 
Um, so you can see a list of all the colors there and it's important to maybe copy them because some of them are quite um, complicated, quite long names. For example, light golden rod yellow. Um, so probably best to copy and paste if you're not sure. Uh, so there we are, I've set the color of my uh, pen. Um, I can also set the width or thickness of the pen. So graphics window dot pen width, there it is, whoops, there it is. Um, and I'm gonna set this against a property, so I use equals to uh, say about 10, you can play around with this. So let's run this program again now. And there we are, we've got a nice uh, solid line that we're drawing with, and there we go, lovely. So now we've got uh, two boxes and our little turtle ready to carry on. So again, what I'd like you to do is have a little play with that. See if you could perhaps complete that picture. If you imagine that as a window, uh, let's just try that with another color now. Let's just change that to, um, let's try orange red and change that to about five. There we go. Um, so yes, if you imagine that this picture here is uh, of a window, so a traditional four square window, have a go and see if you can draw um, two more squares. So either underneath the turtle here, so you've got a big square here divided into four quadrants, or two squares up here, so you've got the window at the top and the turtle perhaps finishing where he started. So that'd be a little uh, opportunity for you to explore and experiment. It's partly about programming, but to be honest, at this point, you're probably, uh, I would imagine, thinking, well, that seems fairly straightforward. All I've got is two commands, turtle.move and turtle.turn. Um, and all you're having to think about is which direction are you facing? And to be honest, that's really the big secret about programming. It's not difficult. Uh, the number of code words that uh, you're using is, is fairly limited. Uh, it wouldn't take up a very big dictionary if you, if you listed them all. Um, as I said before, there are only 14 major programming words in small basic. So it's not that learning the language, it's, it's difficult and understanding what those words do is not difficult. And by the end of this tutorial series, you will understand all of them. The difference is that the real point is that programming is about problem solving. And if you're thinking about how am I going to draw this um, pattern of four squares here and you're having to break it down and think step by step, what do I do? What do I do next? That is what programming is really all about. If you can break a problem down and solve it step by step, that's programming. Turning it into lines of code is the easy bit afterwards. So have a little go at that. And as I say, in the next video, what we're gonna look at is how to reduce the size of this program massively, avoiding all this repetition and copying and pasting by using something called loops, or actually, because we don't want non-programmers to really understand what we're talking about, we call loops iteration, because it sounds fancy. So I'll see you in the next video.